All right. I figured I might as well talk about this movie. Ooh, that's a hot mug, guy. Lord of the Rings Fellowship of the Ring is one of those movies that you could definitely say will stand the test of time. This entire trilogy, really, will stand the test of time. It's never going to age badly, even though there are scenes that will age. There are some effects that have aged. There are some moments that have aged. Me, having worked in the film industry, and me viewing this straight up, not seeing the music, not seeing the effects, not seeing the post-color grading, not seeing the entire element that they put this movie into, it would have been pretty fucking hokey to try and work on one of these movies. But that just tells you how well they crafted these movies. They put you into a realm of fantasy. There's a reason why this wasn't just a movie. This was like a culture. I remember these movies coming out in the theaters and going to see them as a kid. I was, what, 11? It was a pretty kind of weird world. We had just had 9-11 happen. And so to see this kind of story happen was pretty prevalent. Hell, I remember there was controversy about two towers because they're like, oh, the Twin Towers. Like, that's what the name of the book is, though. Sure, these movies came out at a pretty great time in terms of the darkness of the world going on, but these movies are legendary for a reason. Jackson puts his heart and soul into this, but it's not just him. It's the actors, it's the set designers, it's the production team. Everyone cares so much about this. You don't see this happen too often. You don't see this many people this passionate about a project and not just from the creative side but the whole side it's something very rare to see nowadays and that's why there's so much love that's put into this movie and it's just another reason why as people will love this trilogy and it will stand the test of time but as the movie itself this is actually my favorite i like how it sets up the world we are immediately dropped into either you're gonna get on board or you're not gonna like this at all. Obviously, a lot of people loved it. It starts off fantastic with Galadriel setting the stage for what is gonna be this battle of good and evil that has been going on for literally thousands of years. I think it was such a good idea to start the movie here because it drops you right in, it gets you hooked right off the bat. Whereas in the book, it's fucking boring. Of the three books, it's definitely the most boring. I know most people will talk about, oh yeah, what about Tom Bombadil? Shit's boring, guys. The first book does not do well to get started. It's a slow log and it definitely shows that while Tolkien's definitely doing all that world building, it's not the best in terms of keeping you entertained. It's just him kind of being like, okay this is when Tolkien was definitely smoking too much of that pipe weed if you know what I'm saying. Gets you hooked right off the bat which is exactly what this series needs to do and then we get introduced to these legendary legendary characters. Fantastic casting. Ian McKellen as Gandalf is one of the best casting choices as well as him being Magneto. He, he, he killed it in the 2000s. He had really good casting. Elijah Woods will always be a proto for me. Viggo Mortensen this is the movie that introduced me to him, really made him pretty much my favorite actor, not just because of the movies he's done, but also the life he's lived. Kind of outward generosity to the world. Orlando Bloom, obviously, as Legolas, which I know so many girls had his posters up on the walls. <laughs> I get it at the time, but I guess I, it's kind of funny now to think about it. Gimli, ironically cast by John Rhys Davies, who is the tallest actor of them all, and yet he's playing a dwarf, so... That's something I would have loved to have seen on set. Like, this is what I mean by hokey shit. You're seeing a guy purposely do this for most of his filming, and you're not laughing at this. He's six foot two or something. So imagine him being like this throughout the majority of the filming. His legs must have been killing him. I would have been pissed. Something that's not really talked about a lot is Andrew Leslie's cinematography in this film. I hate to sound stereotypical, but he really puts you in this world. He puts you in this realm of fantasy with how he shot the film and what's funny too is it really kind of harkens back to how peter jackson shot a lot of his horror movies like that's what jackson started off as he started as a horror film director which a lot of people don't remember it's something that people don't know and as well at the same time is one of the reasons why it was so hard to get this film financed because could you imagine giving several hundred million dollars to a horror director to direct one of the most legendary tales of fantasy of all time and then make it even more legendary and what's most unfortunate is something i didn't know that he passed away five years ago and that's why we've never been able to see him do anything else and i would have really liked to have seen his artistic style in terms of how he captures images in the camera i would have liked to see what he would have done now especially with like within the last five years and considering how film has changed and adapted then we got howard shore who has his john williams moment and what i mean by John Williams is a soundtrack, a, a score, a theme that you will know for the test of time. One of like Star Wars, Harry Potter, Indiana Jones, Jurassic Park, we have Lord of the Rings. We will never forget the theme of this movie. Ever. 
at least for me. And it all works well into making this a quest. Like we're starting off the quest to destroy the One Ring. The film perfectly displays all of these elements of good and evil. Like for instance, the ring, when the ring falls out of Bilbo's hand, it slammed to the ground. And for something so small, it makes such a significant sound. Then that's the burden, the weight of this single object. And that's in sound design and how it's shot. You know, there was this thing going around recently and talking about in a scene where you would take a single scene of a movie and that basically kind of summarates the entire movie. This is it. When Bilbo gives up the ring, there's so much in this scene. We see Gandalf being tempted by it. We see what it's done to Bilbo at the same time, while it, he is a good person at heart, the ring is the reason why he stayed alive for so long. It's still tempting even him, the most humble of creatures. And this was obviously a focus of what Tolkien was trying to do when he wrote these stories that we humans are hobbits. There's all these legendary creatures, legendary rangers, elves, dwarves, all these legendary people, yet humans, hobbits, are the ones who are willing to take the burden of the ring. And that's kind of the idea of the good man, the good person would do this deed. And that's his representation of how he kind of saw the good in the horribleness that was the First World War. It's perfectly captured in that scene when Frodo accepts the ring. We see that he is willing to take the deed that is, while incredibly treacherous, is the necessary action because it is the good thing to do. And that's perfectly captured in this movie. That's why I love this movie so much. And then there's the action scenes. The Battle for Moria is one of my favorite action sequences because it's dark, it's scary, it's nerve wracking, but it's so adventurous at the same time. Quick, to the bridge of Casa Do. Do, 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 That's my ringtone. So when the part started playing, I was like, oh shit, my phone's ringing. Oh wait, no, it's not. It's such a great part. It's this will of adventure and danger and everything that captures this entire trilogy in a nutshell is that. Da, 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 da. And then speaking of parts that have stood the test of time, obviously this whole movie is memeable. Obviously with Boromir saying one simply does not walk into Mordor. It's been memed to death to the point where when I saw this film in theaters just last year, people were laughing at that part. There were some older folk there who probably don't know the memes and they're kind of like, why are people laughing at this part? Well, as majority of the Lord of the Ring fan base is laughing their ass off at how much this has been memed. But when Boromir dies, when Gandalf dies, re-watching this almost 20 years later, it still hurts, still hits, because it's just so well captured. This is a movie that has the perfect ups and downs, captures it all in the best way. And that's why I feel that this is my favorite movie of the three. It is the perfect stepping stone for the next two movies that are really like hard hitting. The tone gets even more serious and that's more so a reflection on my own person because I personally like the first three Harry Potter books the best out of the entire trilogy. I know a lot of people like more of the older ones but I love the sense of wonder as a child that I had from the first three books and that's perfectly captured in the fellowship. It's just a nostalgia trip for me. That's purely nostalgia speaking. That's why I like the first movie the best out of all the three. And I'm talking about Lord of the Rings. Sorry, I got into a bit of a Harry Potter moment there. The direction, the acting, the music, the cinematography, how the action scenes are shot, how just the entire fantasy illusion is set, is perfectly done in this movie. And that's why I'm gonna give Fellowship of the Ring a seven out of seven. You pretty much know what I'm gonna do for Two Towers and Return of the King. I'll leave that for later, but you, you pretty much know what's gonna happen. Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this review. This was a bit of a weird tangent for me, and I enjoy talking about this movie because I try to make my review short and to the point. Like, I'm trying to be more of a, hey, quick watch sort of guy, but also for editing. Editing these long ones is a bitch, but this is a movie that you can't do a short review about. You, you, you can't. It deserves it. The amount of effort that these guys put into this movie, I should at least put more than an hour of effort into this editing. For the amount of effort that these guys put into this movie, this trilogy, I definitely should show appreciation. This is a movie that deserves effort because it was well captured, it was well produced, and it's a goddamn treasure. <laughs> Anyways, guys, that's all for me. I hope you enjoyed this review. If you did, leave a like, and if you're interested in more, subscribe. Otherwise, Stay safe out there. See you guys next time. Thanks for watching the video. You're probably wondering who I am. My name is Nitz, and you might remember me from the animated cult classic TV show, Undergrads. 
It's been a while, but I'm happy to say the Click is finally getting back together in an all-new movie, thanks to a successful Kickstarter campaign. But we are still asking for your support. You know, Nitz, you can't get more money unless you offer questionable favors. Yeah, guy. Unless, of course, those favors involve the ladies, guy. <laughs> By support, I mean getting the word out, guys. Oh, well, couldn't you find a better means than this guy? All he seems to talk about is supernatural, or hold a coffee mug real awkward. Why didn't you ask a Kardashian or something? Yeah, guy. Get in with the ladies, guy. <laughs> hey, he's trying to help out. Like you've been trying with Kimmy Burton? I've seen Jabba the Hutt finish a marathon faster. Yeah, guy. You're a massive slug thing, guy. <sighs> <sighs> to see any and all updates about the upcoming Undergrads movie, be sure to check out and like the Bring Back Undergrads Facebook page. And with any luck, we'll see you guys soon.